The worst way of being lost isn't not knowing where you are, but knowing you're in the wrong place, feeling you don't belong. People will try to convince you there's no place for you. You belong elsewhere. You belong nowhere. Get lost. However, before you turn to go, know that those people are wrong. Everyone belongs. And you, you have a place in this world, which was created with you in mind. The world with no place for you is an imaginary one. You have a place of belonging in this world. The lily in the pond, the note in the song, the cloud in the sky, the sugar in the cookie. <laughs> and no one can take it from you. You can lose your belongings but you cannot lose your belonging. You're always in it. You can't ever get lost. Amen. Good morning, Stone Village, and happy Sunday. I hope that all of you are well and safe in this world. All is well in my world. The Lord be with you, and let us pray. Holy One, as we travel through the long shadows of Lent, Strip us of our attachments and addictions, that we might bear our souls to you. Render us deaf and blind to the distractions of want, that we might hear and see only the demands of the gospel. And break through our spiritual blockades, that we might know your relentless love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The reading today is from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep, and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. Or what of the woman having 10 silver coins? If she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> I imagine each one of you can name parts of your life that have been lost to you. And the question is always, can we find the lost parts of our lives? Can we become whole again? As I read today's gospel lesson, I wonder if the shepherd and the woman are asking themselves the same questions. I wonder if they feel as if they have lost a part of their life, a sheep, a coin. However, it's not just a sheep, any sheep, but this sheep, a particular sheep. And it's not just a coin, any coin, but this coin, a particular coin. It's not just a part of their life, 
any part, but this part, a particular part. And without it, this part, they are less than whole. Now I realize this is not the usual way of understanding today's lesson. The typical interpretation goes something like, the lost sheep and the lost coin are those who have gone astray and become lost to life and to God. And the shepherd and the woman are understood as the embodiment of a searching God, which is great. In fact, I have preached that sermon. But it doesn't fit the story. Listen again to the woman's words. I have found the coin that I had lost. The shepherd said, I have found my sheep that was lost. The woman lost her coin. The shepherd lost his sheep. It's more about the shepherd and the woman than the sheep and the coin. Also, I find it difficult to attribute culpability and free will to a sheep and a coin. <laughs> Plus, I don't identify as either. The lost sheep and coin already belonged to the shepherd and the woman. The shepherd had 100 sheep to begin with, and the woman had 10 coins to begin with. The shepherd lost a part of himself. The woman lost a part of herself. They were whole and complete until something of their life was lost. So what if we are the shepherd and the woman in today's lesson? And what if the sheep and the coin are parts of our life, parts of ourselves we have lost? To have lost a thing, or to have experienced loss, is something we have all known in life. Sometimes we lose parts of ourselves to grief and sorrow, and life becomes overwhelming and confusing. The pain and wounds of life takes pieces of us. Sometimes we lose parts of ourselves to fear and anger, and jealousy, and a refusal to forgive, unwilling to lay down that which does not give life, but breaks life into pieces. Sometimes we lose parts of ourselves to success, our quest for approval, life's expectations of us, which almost always leave us feeling inadequate and broken. And sometimes the lost parts of our lives pertain to our faith, our hope, our dreams, and our capacity to love, love self and love our neighbor. The point I'm making is that it is easy to lose a piece of one's self. And the question is always, Will we live without those lost parts of ourselves, or will we search until we find? Are we willing to live less than a whole life? Or, as Mary Oliver once asked, are we breathing just a little and calling it a life? Today's gospel, as I hear it, is an invitation to wholeness and abundance, or what we sometimes call salvation. It's not about being 90% or even 99% alive, but about being 100% alive. We are to look at the entirety of our life. We are to name what is lost. Every sheep matters. Every coin matters. Every part of our life matters and is worth being found. So often we hear the gospel story and we're told it's about making bad people good. And that is wrong. The gospel story 
is about bringing people back to life. It's a path by which we find ourselves. It is a call to wholeness. Our life's journey is a journey toward wholeness. And it is a lifelong search to integrate and live a whole life. Jesus said, the shepherd goes after the lost sheep until he finds it. And the woman searches carefully for the coin until she finds it. Until he finds it. Until she finds it. There is a promise and a call in that for us as well. The promise is that there will be a finding for us too. And the call is to search until we find. And sometimes it is a call to light a lamp, sweep our house, and search carefully in the very place in which we live and have our relationships, the place that is most known and familiar. In other times, it is the call to wholeness that takes us into the wilderness, into the untamed parts of our lives. This type of searching, searching until we find, is not a searching outside of ourselves, but a searching within ourselves, naming those lost parts of our lives, naming our pain and our confusion, naming our hope for a whole life. And sometimes it means searching until we value ourselves, beyond what we have done and left undone beyond what we have and don't have, beyond our successes and failures, beyond what is or might be. Because life is valued, because a life valued is a life of possibility. Can we find the lost parts of our lives? Can we become whole again? Yes, yes, we can. And I don't know how or when this finding will happen for you, but I have faith it does for your life and for my life. And regardless of where we are on our individual journey, God is with us. Don't give up. Keep searching until you find what is lost and can know yourself as whole again. Thanks be to God. Amen. I give thanks to God for each of you and I pray this day you bear witness to the love of God in this world. Bear witness to the love of God so those to whom love is a stranger, they will find in you a generous and loving friend. In the name of Christ Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. I love you, stoners. I'll see you soon. Bye.